Since being diagnosed, I've had multiple hospital admissions, multiple intensive care admissions, so I never know what I'm going to react to next. Watch. Good boy. Good boy. I think quite a lot of people don't see me as disabled and that can be quite frustrating when I need adaptations because I get that, oh, you don't look sick or you don't look disabled because they can't see if I'm in pain, they can't see my organs swelling internally, things like that. So that can be quite frustrating because I almost have to validate my disability, which I don't feel anybody should have to do. Towards the end of 2012, I started getting allergic reactions to fruit. So when I ate an apple, my lips would blister a little bit and feel a bit itchy. First it was apples, then it was strawberries, then it was tomatoes. So I went to see my doctor and was sent to an allergist and they said it was oral allergy syndrome and to carry an EpiPen just in case because there's an ever so slight risk of a huge reaction. And then about six months after that, I was just out one day with friends at an event. I hadn't eaten anything new, I hadn't drunk anything new and I suddenly felt really unwell. The next thing I know I'm being like injected with things and they're putting like oxygen masks on my face and then I lost consciousness. And they told me I'd had um, a life-threatening anaphylactic reaction. They said it was probably a fluke thing, this sometimes happens. Don't worry about it too much, you've got EpiPens if you do, but it's unlikely it'll happen again. Since my very first anaphylactic reaction, I've used over 250 EpiPens. After years of suffering from continuous allergic reactions, 22-year-old Natasha was finally diagnosed with mast cell activation syndrome. The cells in my body called mast cells are responsible for releasing things such as histamines. My body, the cells react inappropriately, so if there is an attack, it releases chemicals, but it releases too many, or sometimes it releases chemicals when there's no trigger at all, so I have completely spontaneous reactions. Reactions can vary, they can be anything from just feeling under the weather, itchy, very tired, or they can be life-threatening, like tongue and throat swelling. I have pictures from reactions because I don't really remember them very well, so it helps piece things together for me. So this was my very first intensive care admission in 2014, when I'd ended up being transferred to ICU for the first time. And it seems really strange looking at myself with hair now because I'm so used to not having hair. I'm allergic to my hair growing, so when it does start to grow, it blisters and it burns and you know, it's, it's absolute agony. So I'd rather just keep it short and have no hair and be pain free than suffer for a little bit of hair. I just kind of have to make the, the bored girl look work really. I don't have much choice. The mass activation syndrome is an incredibly difficult condition to live with and it can be very hard to cope with. Pretty much anything can impact this condition and sometimes my body's okay with it and other times it has a complete meltdown over the slightest thing. I'm not able to do most things most 22 year olds do. I can't drink alcohol, I can't even tolerate it on my skin. We tend to only cook things that she's safe with. We limit the, the food that my husband and I have. Obviously try and clean them as much as possible to reduce the pollen in the house. I think mainly using antibacterial wipes and, and sprays, making sure all surfaces are cleaned down, especially with having the dogs as well. When Natasha's in hospital and she's had a, a severe reaction, it's very distressing to see her, but I don't want her to see my distress or upset because I don't want her to feel worried about me. You want to walk away and, and uh, not experience it. Um, but obviously you have to stay. Um, it is distressing. Despite her daily battles with her allergies, this has not stopped Natasha from pursuing her passion for gymnastics. I've done gymnastics since the age of eight, just recreationally, and when I developed this condition I wasn't able to keep up with mainstream gymnastics. Switching to disability allows me to compete and I can train at my own rate rather than pushing myself. I think what I admire most about Natasha is her positivity. I think it's her personality that gets her through everything because she's just a really bubbly personality and really positive. In the gym there are quite a lot of barriers because other girls wear aerosol body sprays and there's chalk and there can be dust around. When I exercise, because of the way the mast cells affect my brain, I lose the feeling from my elbows down and my knees down. So when I'm stood on the beam I can't feel where my feet are, I can only look at the beam to know where they are. But I'm quite persistent and I'm quite stubborn and 
I love gymnastics so much and I think because I have that passion that's what gets me through the tough days to then be able to go out and compete and show people that you know disabled people can actually do things. I admire her determination and her ability to laugh about everything no matter how serious it is. I really don't know where she gets her strength from but I think she, she likes to um, inspire people if she can to, to put to say to them you can achieve things if you try. These are the British medals and then when I get a gold I also get a trophy that's the UK number one trophy which I've won for the last three years and this is my Pride of Sport trophy in 2015 I was named the Disabled Sports Person of the Year which just feels amazing to be recognised as a disabled athlete nationally, not just locally. I've always supported Tasha doing her gymnastics because it's something she's always loved and been passionate about. People always ask me, well, how does it work if you're a gymnast that's allergic to exercise? And I think that's kind of the point. It doesn't really work, which is why it's so difficult to train and work around it. And it's a huge barrier. But, you know, with the support of my friends, family and coaches, we, we work through it as best as we can. I mean, I'm never going to be the world's greatest gymnast, but as long as I enjoy it and I can keep doing what I'm doing, then I'm happy.